Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. You guessed it, that's my microwave. And you know what? It's dead. It is... Everything works fine except nothing gets hot that I put inside of there. So I'm going to try and fix it. I've looked up a couple of uh, forums, uh, small appliance electronics type repairs, and uh, see if I can show you guys and gals what I do and see if I can have some success fixing this. Now, rule of thumb, what they say is if you've got a cheap microwave and it's, you know, it was like under $200, just buy another one. It's not worth trying to repair it. Uh, but if you have a high-end one, this one was about 600 new. Uh, they're probably worth fixing. It's about five years old. And there are some pretty simple things you can do to fix them, including some cleaning, um, reset switches, discharging capacitors, uh, and the worst case, replace the magnetron, which is probably under $100. Uh, so here we go. I'm not going to show you every single second of it, but... Uh, We'll get it apart and we'll have fun looking at it. So there's five screws uh, to get the outside cover off. Two of them are Torx. I don't know why they figured two Torx and three Phillips head. That was going to prevent somebody from taking it off. I don't know. Anyway, you lift it, kind of lift the back up and pull towards you. Lift up, pull towards you. It, it slides onto this lip here. And... It, it goes onto this lip here, but mostly you have to break it loose from the lips, that's all. There you go. See? Okay, we're inside. It doesn't actually look extremely complicated. Um, famous last words, huh? <laughs> um, but uh, there's some information here about... Uh, hold on. There. Uh, you're supposed to check some switches if you replace a fuse and then it tells you there's like one fuse uh, and to discharge the capacitors by short circuiting the high voltage capacitor terminals and I'm not sure what that is but I might have to look that up but first I'm going to see if I can find a fuse well that's the high voltage capacitor right there you can see it says it uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to discharge it. I'm uh, still looking for the fuse. And those are probably the three switches they're talking about confirming that they're working okay. One, two, three. Those gray looking things there. Still no fuse. Oh, there it is. There's the fuse right there. Let's see. Mm. Mm, I think it looks good. I'll have to put the camera... Yeah, that's about as good as you're going to get there. I'll have to put the camera down, inspect it a little closer. Well, I'm not seeing any obvious burnt components. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is put this video up and I'll put it on a new forum that I found and I'll see if anybody can give me any thoughts on this. Um, if I have any luck with that forum, maybe I'll get somebody who's worked on one of these before. Uh, the fuse looks good. Right there is the fuse. I didn't discharge anything yet because I don't know how to do that. So maybe if somebody wants to tell me what to touch to what here. We've got three tabs that are used up and one blank one. One that's not used. And This, nothing looks burnt. Everything looks fine. It, even the bulb lights up. Um, so, let me put this up and see what I get. Thanks. So here I'm going to test the door switch. That's one of the things that uh, was suggested when it does no heat is happening. The door switch, the 
high voltage capacitor and the magnetron. So I'll, the door switch is the easiest one, so I'll try that first. Uh, so this is a multimeter, obviously, and and right now, let's this would be like the switch is open, and it's it reads one, and if I touch these leads together, if I can do that with one hand there, the switch. Well, you saw it for a second there. Sorry, I'm just trying to do this one hand while I video there. See, it's just intermittent. There it is. Okay, zero. That's when the switch is closed. So this is the door switch right here. You see it, it, it also pops open the door, but the switch right there tells the the rest of the microwave whether to go or not go so we'll try and do that I'm not sure I'll be able to do a video of it but uh, I'll try right there see there's one little brassy right on my right on top and there's one a little bit further back and set in and let me do the reading first without video so what it is is right at the end of my screwdriver there's a little black tab sticking out. That's the switch. So when the door closes, it presses down on that, closes the switch, and allows the heat to happen. So just wanted to tell you that. Okay, so the door is closed, and it reads zero. And I open the door, and it goes to one. So that switch is okay. Hi. Actually, what that was is a door hook switch, and that one is good. And there's another door hook switch right there. See the little, that one has a white um, tab that has to go down. So I'm going to check that one now. Those two are door hook switches, and those are also required for it to get hot. So I pulled the wires off of that door hook switch, the top one, and I've got my leads on there. So that's door open, and that's door closed, so that one's working also. There's one more, and it's on the bottom side of this switch, where the end of my screwdriver is. And it's also related to the door, it's just in the middle of the other two. And so this one has three switches that ensure the door is closed, I guess. You can see a part moving there. Watch. See if I can show you. Yeah, you should have been able to see that. So I'll test that one too. Well, I've got my leads on the middle one there. So there's closed door and open door. So all three of those switches are okay. I'm going to come back to this capacitor here and ask a couple of questions. So first question is, is this the diode? I think that might be the diode, but I'm not sure. So I have to disconnect it to test it, and I don't want to touch anything until I've discharged this. So this capacitor has four contacts on it. So is this like two capacitors just sitting side by side in one box and I just go across each one of these and will that damage the diode when I discharge it? I don't know. So I'm asking questions. If you guys uh, can help me out, please let me know. Thanks. Okay, I'm back on the microwave and I found a, a really good troubleshooting guide on YouTube. I will uh, put a link to it in my video. And if you Google microwave oven troubleshooting in minutes, step by step, or some combination of those words, you're going to find the, the, this guy's video. Um, so jumping right on it, first thing to do is short out the capacitor to be safe. Uh, the capacitor stores energy and... This is the capacitor right here. 
so what it says is to touch across the terminals so this is an insulated screwdriver I'm going to try not to touch and my understanding is that capacitors self discharge after a while and this has been sitting a couple of days so uh, that one's got a cover on it That's the diode. Let me see if I can pull it off. I might have to get a pliers to pull it off. Uh, well, I'm going to pause till I get this off. Actually, what I realized I could do is just the other end of this diode goes to ground here so I can just touch that well let me do it this way touch that one there switch hands and they'll go down let's just slip it a little go down there and I'm pretty sure I've shorted that to that which ends up down there so all right capacitors are discharged I'm gonna go over a couple of things that uh, I might have already done but I'm following this guy's video so this is a filter power comes in here your 110 and there's a fuse right there it's a slow blow fuse so you want to look at that fuse you can even pop it out and test it but pretty much you can look at it and see whether it's burnt or whether it's good this one I'm going to say it's definitely good um, so I'm going to move on because I want to make this fast I'm not going to check things that I think are are good if in the end if it doesn't work out then I'll go back and check some of those so check your fuse right there. Next thing we have a thermal overload switch and this is in between power coming in and power going over to that circuit board. If your oven gets too hot this thermal overload switch right here will, uh, will open up and shut things down so you don't have a fire or whatever so this is just continuity uh, I'm not going to teach you how to do continuity you can look that up on another uh, video I've got this set to check continuity so that's continuity red to black so that's good I did just find another thermal cutoff right there, so I'm going to test that one. These uh, tab terminals are hard to get off. That one's good also. What I ended up doing on, on some of them, just give you a little idea, I get it get this screwdriver a flat blade screwdriver and pry it up like that it has like a little locking point that locks into the hole on the tab and you got to break that loose somehow so any way you can do it pry it like that or take a needle nose and wiggle it I guess whatever you can do to get them apart I think the wire should be off for testing the thermal overloads so now we've got power coming in, power through the fuse, power through the thermal overloads, power now going to the door switches. I already previously showed you how to check the door switches. So power to the control board. That's where we are right now. now some of these tests that I'm going through require the power to be put back on. So every time you put the power on and then you unplug it make sure you short out those 
capacitors right down there like I showed you. So we're going to check the relay that comes that is attached to the circuit board. The relay is this right here and the way he says to check that is to put some powered up put like a cup of coffee or a cup of water in there and then run it and see if the magnetron turns on. You can tell if it turns on because it's got a loud hum to it. Um, so I've got water in there. I've got power on. We're going to try that now. Uh, yeah, okay. So we've got a 30 second button here. Add full power, 30 seconds. To me, it sounds like it's humming. I don't know. I'm going to tap it. To me, it's got a hum like it's running or it's trying to run. But it's not getting hot. Check my water stone cold so I think that relay is okay so the point of that test is sometimes there'll be some arcing or pitting in this uh, relay and when you tap on it it will briefly dislodge the arcing or the pitting and it's just a practical test to make it to check it without having to take it all apart I sort of wish I would get a little spark or something every time I discharge those capacitors, but it doesn't seem to do anything, but I uh, would still suggest you go through the procedure of discharging them. Uh, next, we're going to test the transformer. This is the transformer right there. Okay, so I've set my meter to AC 200 range, which will get me to the 120, what I'm looking for. And I plugged everything back in. I'm attaching my probes to the low voltage side of the transformer. And I've got my coffee and my water in there. And I'm going to try and run it and see what happens. And I'm getting a door error. Should not be the case. There we go. I'm not getting 120. So, that's not good. That's supposed to indicate a problem with that relay. Hmm. Maybe I'll run this again and I'll tap on the relay. Let me get in the right position here. Just for the fun of it, I'm going I'm to switch those two uh, probes around. I don't think it matters, but I'm going to do that. Okay, I did have my meter set wrong, so I'm going to run this test again. Uh, there's a this toggle here is supposed to be out for volts. All right, and I'm getting 119, which you know between 110 and 120, you're good. So that means that door relay is good, and I'm getting the correct power to that side of the transformer. And we'll check the cup again when it shuts off, and I think we'll find it's still cold. I don't think the magnetron's coming on. I, I don't think it's buzzing the way it's supposed to buzz. So now we're going to test the transformer. Make sure you discharge the capacitor. Disconnect from the magnetron. Right there, just pull down. And I wrote down white equals not used because there's one.
capacitor connection right there that I'm pointing at that's not used. So I marked it with white, white out there, and I wrote down white not used. So the the other red wire goes there, and the other red wire which which goes to the other capacitor. There's like a pair of capacitors goes there and the diode I left it connected because it doesn't affect testing the transformer. So we're testing the low voltage side of the transformer now. We've got the transformer basically disconnected from everything. So what you want to have is a very low resistance, a low ohm reading. Oops, let me get that back. A low ohm reading between the two 120 volt inputs. So I'm connected on those. I've got my e my meter set for 200 ohm. I've got 2,000. I've got 20,000. 200,000. And. Two million, I guess. Anyway, you should have less than one. One point zero would be one ohm. So this is point six. So this is supposed to be good. And then you want to take and check to the body of the transformer. You scratch off a place. You scratch the varnish off in one place. So you're checking to the body. Um, so. We're going to check from where the red lead, is, red, red lead is connected to the body. And you're checking for a short between that connection there and the body. And you get no reading at all. So we'll just move this red one to the other side. It's OK. The color doesn't matter. And we'll check to the body and nothing at all. So that's the low side of the transformer appears to be not shorted out is what we were checking. Now we're going to go to the high side. Well, something I think I might have left out. You have to change the range on the meter. So when you're testing between the two contacts you want to use the low range that's where I got about one half of an ohm. And then you want to ch change to your high range when you test to the body of the transformer. And you get no reading the body. That's on the high range. Okay. So I think I left that out. Now we go to the high side. Okay, we're on the high voltage side and we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, on this side, there are no tab terminals, so you have to go by the wires. The wires are twisted around, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have to test it on the wires. What you're testing is there's two wires that come out underneath this top coil. So that's a winding. So you want to test to make sure there's a very low resistance on that winding. Uh, and then we're going to go and test it to the case. So this, this is going to one end of the winding and the other one I'm going to 
go right here. You'll have to figure it out on yours. But I'm going to probe there, and I'm on a low setting, and I've got less than one ohm, two tenths, three tenths of one ohm. Okay, and there could be a little bit more, but I've got connections on these leads and everything. Now, so that should be all right. Now I'm going to go to a higher range, and I'm going to test from each one of those leads to the body, and I should get nothing. So there's one of them, and there's no reading at all. Yeah, right. One of them, no reading at all. And then I'm going to have to go from this one over here, which I confirmed to the body. We're on the high range. So I'm going to hold that in there because I can't clip. And I go to the body. And I'm wiggling a little bit to make sure I'm on it good. So I think even though that two or three tenths of an ohm is less than the six, seven tenths on the other side, I think that's good. Uh, so now there's one more test on the high side. So the last thing on the transformer to test is there's one more wire. There's the two from that coil and then there's a high voltage out, and it's this one. It's separate from the two that are kind of paired up together. So you want to test between that and the case where you scratched off um, some, some of the varnish. And you want to set it on a 200 range, still on ohms, and touch that there. You should get between 90 and 120 for resistance. I'm getting 112, 113. So I think that's good and I think that's as much as we can test on this transformer. I think the transformer is okay. Now, if Froggy did something wrong and one of you guys is actually an expert on this, please correct me in the comments. I know you will and I appreciate that because I am not a small appliance repair person or an, an electric electrical or electronics expert but I think we've tested the transformer according to the other guy's notes so I'm going to give you a link to him okay now we're taking the magnetron out to test it as best we can so I, I there was one screw holding the thermal coupler on the top of this plate here so I took that out and then I two screws to hold this plate onto the magnetron and then there's three screws holding the magnetron on to the rest of the microwave. So I'm going to be in your way here. So actually, I'll just shut it off while I get those three screws. OK, so we've got three, three screws. We've got the magnetron out. And I right off, I see something that I don't like the look of very much. Check that out. That part sticks into the microwave, and it looks like it's all burnt to hell. So I think we found the problem right there. Um, I, I, I guess I, I will briefly go over how to test the magnetron and the diode electronically, maybe. But actually, right now, I want to go online and see if I can get a magnetron. You see it? I put my headlight on it. That's a mess. Okay. Froggy will be back. You know what I'm going to do? Um, because I'm following another guy's YouTube video, and he's really better than I am, so I am going to refer you to go to his video for the testing of the magnetron and the diode. Those are the only two parts left, the magnetron and the diode, and he does a really good job of it. Uh, probably doesn't talk as much as I talk over the uh, course of the video, uh, but I've got to go order this uh, magnetron, and uh, I hope this helps you out, and I hope that other guy helps you out. I, I will probably, I will put a link to his video into one of my 
playlists, probably home repair. Yeah, the home repair playlist. Uh, so you don't have to go searching for him. You will find it through through my channel. Okay? Be safe. Have fun. Remember to discharge the capacitor, even though I didn't get any fireworks or sparks. But uh, do that. Okay? See you. Froggy out. Bye-bye. One last thing, guys and gals. My wife got one of these hover domes or these uh, anti-spatter dome things with magnets that sticks up at the top of the microwave so you just leave it in there and wash it once in a while anyway in my opinion that's what killed the microwave i think it, it was just two or three or maybe four days at the most after she bought that thing and we stuck it in the microwave that it that it died so i'm just saying if I were you, I would never put one of those things in there. At least never put one that has magnets on it. Maybe one that just has uh, plastic or whatever the material is, but no magnets. And if you have one for years and it works fine, good for you. But I think it killed my microwave. Okay, see ya. Froggy out.